Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the importance of client side scripting on a model driven form or you can say Dynamics 365 form. So here what I'm trying to do. Uh, so this is my solution. Inside the solution, I created one custom entity the called customer. You can say entity or table and I created some custom columns. So if I uh, let's show you the columns like I created some co column called a total revenue. Uh, total number of employees uh, and then also I created a uh, few column called name it's a simple column and also I created some complex column like uh, CT it's a lookup column then I have uh, expertise on this op choices option where uh, user have to select the multiple choices based on those and also I created uh, one date columns also so I created some uh, multiple different types of column and what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to retrieve the information of different data types column and represent and show that information in a model dialog box. So in this video, my in, my intention was how to retrieve the different data type values uh, with the help of client side script. So now let's see uh, see that here. Okay, so this has been done. Now what thing I need to do? So here I need to go to the form and inside the form, all the required form uh, required field I need to add into the form. So this is the important step. Uh, uh, guys, please note it down. If you don't add that field inside your form, so in that sense, you are not able to retrieve the column value with the help of client side script. This is mandatory step. Need to add the field inside your form. And now, uh, once you're done with this uh, basics thing, uh, now let's look at the importance of event handlers and the importance of uh, execution context. So uh, now, first, let's see the event handlers. So what are the event handlers? You can, if you are directly in, in the form, these are the event handlers and uh, before getting to the event handler we need to add the uh, first we need to create the web resource so how do we create the web resource so simply again we need to go down into web resource from here you click on new go to the web resource and then simply give the meaningful name choose the type here we are retrieving we are performing the retrieval operation uh, so need javascript code and then we need to choose the language. So here I'm choosing English. So here I already created the one web resource. I'll simply show you that. So this is this one is my web resource. Uh, so for creating a web resource, you need to uh, if, uh, you need to use Code Studio because uh, we need a code editor. Uh, first, you write your entire code in, inside the code, uh, uh, code Studio or Visual Studio, and then simply choose your JavaScript file, pick your JavaScript file, and add it over here. And then uh, these are some basic things that I can see like a name it is auto pick and type is JavaScript and I if I click on this URL so it simply redirects me to the code the code that I have written it is showing uh, show me like this and if you want to go some uh, additional uh, some advanced level of uh, web resources uh, then you need to go to the redirect to the classic version so this is my classic version and here I open the same web resource that I have already added so here you can see we have various options are available like uh, these are the already added but from here you can have additional option called text editor from here you can directly edit your code directly from the text editor though it has some limitation if you have a code like code going beyond 3000 or 4000 offline and that says i think that code editor directly editing code is not something that i am suggesting from here you can directly go to the code editor instead of using this online editor all right, so this is the web resource that we have created. Now let's see how to enable that web resource into the form. Uh, from here, first uh, I'm here into the form. Here first you need to uh, click on add library. And from here you need to choose the web resource that you created. So and uh, whatever the name that you are given, you simply add that name and then simply choose the web resource. So in this case, I already added one web resource. Uh, it's called JS underscore height. So I already added. Uh, that web resource so it is now attached to my form and now now this uh, we are going to see the event handlers now event handlers will provide us an opportunity to add your custom uh, event implement your custom javascript code via events so what are those uh, common events that they are uh, event handlers they are providing to us first we have uh, this on save event and other one is the on load event simply whenever you save your changes you can simply add your uh, custom javascript uh, code into this event so whenever you save your changes your custom code will fire and on load whenever your form gets load at that moment uh, you can add your custom code 
and then on the at the time of form load your JavaScript code will executes and if you want to add your event some granular level like on change of field attribute field values in that sense you can also go in you can access the event from here like this is the event handler it will fire on change event of the field value so those are the event handlers and the, the most important part of event handler is like uh, it gives us an uh, option where we can pass the execution context so what is execution context so first uh, yeah so here we need to choose the event type then we will going to choose the javascript library this is the web resource that we just recently added and then we need to also provide the function name so what is the function name the function is something that the code that we have written inside the method that uh, method or function that function or method name we need to pass it over here and enable it simply enable your uh, uh, code and yeah this is the important thing execution context it provide it actually provides us uh, gives us an option of opportunity to interact with the form level event like uh, you know uh, so once we pass this execution context so we need to create an object of the form context and then uh, form context actually gives us opportunity to access with the data element of the form as well as ui element of the form now now if you now simply ui element nothing but this tabs uh, this sections if you want to hide or show the tab or if you want to uh, check the what are the type of form whether it is on created mode or what is whether it is on updated mode or if you want to interact with the business process flow so in that sense you need to go with the ui element of the form context and if you want to perform any data level of operation like retrieve the value of this column so in that case you can go ahead with uh, and use the data element of object so there are two types of uh, uh, things are available now uh, these are some uh, basic thing that we need to do first we need to create a web resource then we need to attach that web resource as a library to our form then we need to expose our events event handlers and we need to choose events on which event we need to fire our javascript code and then we need to pass the execution context which right so these are some basic thing now uh, the primary level of configuration thing has been done now let's move it on to the code level and i will show you the explain you the code so yeah this is my uh, code that i have written this is my function called gate column values and you can see i pass pass execution context so what it does the execution context that i have configured on a form level then uh, then it uh, it will simply access that attributes and here it gives me two option to create an object so here i created the object of form context and from this form context i can here you can see i can uh, whether check what are the type of form uh, so here uh, i created form context dot ui i'm going to ui element side and then get form type uh, and here i just simply pass to so now to it represent that my form is already being saved and now it is open for edit mode so that's why because i don't want it to always check all these value where, where user are creating a new record so that means all controls are empty and it doesn't make any sense so that's why i make this form uh check this form and uh, which is type is two now here now let's look at how to retrieve the values of the column so here i was simply using form context or get control and provide the field name and then using the get value so get value simply help me to retrieve the value of the column then uh, this is for the single value this one is for the whole number this one is for decimal number and you can see for date i'm using uh, instead of using get control i'm using get attribute and here it will return the entire string date string and i don't want to uh, show the date string instead of that i need to format so for this purpose i just simply check that is null and then i'll format my date string as a mmdby format uh, if I, if I am sure that my date is never gonna be empty, in that sense, I can simply directly uh, instead of checking null value, I can simply use this formula like this. Now uh, let's look at the multi how to retrieve the values of multi option set values. So for this, uh, again I'm using get attribute, provide the field name, and here I'm using get options. So what it returns is simply returns the uh, array of element where I have the values are represent in the text and value format so i'm getting and if i want to separately return only value so i can use the get value or if uh, so it will just simply return value and if i want to only get the text element of the value so i can use this text get text uh, attribute 
uh, if you want it now, this is simple option set value where I need to retrieve yes or no. So I can directly just simply use get text. So it will return the value. Uh, and uh, there's a one more approach here. Uh, like uh, I, if I want to, uh, instead of using this um, uh, get option, if I want to only get entire array of element of option set value, so I can use this one also. And now this one is retrieve two option. This is for the Boolean uh, where I am retrieving the Boolean value. Uh, again, I'm using get value here. And for lookup, I'm, so it is pretty much complex uh, uh, attribute. So here I'm only using get form context of uh, get attribute and provide the column name. And here initially I just initialized some variables to just uh, uh, to prevent from null exception errors. And here I'm just checking it. And uh, the uh, this, uh, uh, lookup value what it returns this is return the uh, array and inside the array uh, if what it does return this id represent the guid of that lookup field and uh, this name will re represent the value of the lookup item and this entity type represent the entity or table name of the value so this is how we can able to retrieve the lookup value with the help of this form context and then I simply use this uh, one more method to pass all the values inside the open dialog method. And this open dialog method, nothing but the simply out of box dialog, which is uh, provided by the model driven uh, form with the help of xrm.navigation.open dialog method and just provided the useful parameter to it. So this is how my code I have written. Now let's check the output here. Uh, let me click on FL. So I'm showing you in a debugger mode. Let me refresh here. And as you can see, this is my execution context. Now we'll see I created an object. So here I get able to see the data element. This is my data element and this is my UI element. And now let's dig down a little bit more. Yes, my form type is two because it's already data saved. So it goes in. Uh, so this is my first field. Let's check what is written. So it retrieves the name coded brand, which I have just added here. Okay. So then let's go revenue so yeah revenue is retrieved founded on this is my date you can see this is the entire string and this is not meaningful to represent so instead of that i formatted over here so it looks like it's in nicer way now let's look it out here the created on again uh, i'm sure that it's not going to be null anytime so it represents like this uh, now let's see the option set values as you can see it represents it retrieves entire string for entire array format values text and values and from here i can get these only selected values of the selected values so it's two and four and let's see the text it's yeah it, the selected values it represent like this uh, and then i the second option is that you can directly I, in either of just going to get all options you can directly use get selected option as well so it directly gives only only the selected options retrieve the selected options like this way again it's array uh, element uh, zero and one in one element, you can see the text and the value of that option values. Now let's look at the city. This is lookup. And here we have get all the related attributes here. Empty, null, and let's see the city ID. So this is a uh, geo ID. Uh, this is the city name. It's Mumbai in I lookup. And let's see the entity name. Yeah, it's, a, it's this is my entity table name. And then I simply pass that value to the open dialog box. So this is how, and let's finally check the output. Yeah, so this is the nicer dialog box. You can see all the values that we have we retrieved with the help of this uh, client side scripting, event handler, form contains all with the help of all these things, we can able to retrieve the values. So a single value, a single line value, it's a code band is coming from here. Uh, then we have to, this is the uh, total number. It's uh, coming from this employee section. Then we have currency, currency coming from this total revenue. Then we have date, date time. These fields are found here, mentioned is here. Then we have multi-select option already selected. We have selected two options, so it represent all two options. Then we have found also uh, two options sent is also retrieved at yes. And here you can see the lookup value. We are using CT. Uh, it retrieved the GUID, then lookup value, and it also represents the CT name. So this is how in a pretty easier way we can able Kaisap script will help us to retrieve the information. With this uh, information, you can either you can perform a complex level of uh, business tool, uh, either you can interact with the uh, business process flow 
on change of any stage if you want to fire a custom uh, javascript code this can be also possible uh, and this is the simpler way to if, if the out of box functionality is not supported then you can use the javascript code so this is how we have retrieved the value i hope you like this video and if you like it please like and share and subscribe to my channel and i'm i'm soon i'll be going to deliver uh, much more videos your subscription like help me to motivate and also motivates me to uh, present for more useful video thank you thank you all